Thanks for tuning in. I'm hoping to get a little bit of help with layout options. I'm trying to work all this stuff out on paper first, and then before I really start cutting fabric, I just want to make sure that my little theories are able to be proven. You know what I mean? Um, so, one thing that I'm trying to do here is crowdsource a bit. And then another thing that I'm trying to do is just to be like, hey, this is what I'm working on right now. Um, I think that I'm cracking the code a little bit, but I want to try to talk to other tradesmen, tradeswomen, whoever you are. And I want to see what other people think of my layout options. And also, like, what would you prefer to have in specific areas depending on your trade, you know? So if you're going to participate, in the little Q&A that I have for the prospective audience is one, what is your trade? Two, do you run one pouch? Do you run two pouches? And then three, what would be your perfect pouch? Like where would you have this and that? Um, so for me, I've grown really accustomed to having my tape be tight to my body up top. There's a little bit of issues that you have to work through with that. With having a layout like that, you have a longer setup coming off your body. Now, what I've come to find is that with both like Diamondback is doing this, Badger is doing this, um, their, their standard length seems to be 14. I have worked mine down to 13, all right? Um, little issue that I'm having, where my tape pocket is becoming really small um, as far as length. But one thing that I think I'm, I have figured out in my head, you see how that's like way proud. I think if I just add a little bit to this top lip, I'm gonna be shorter, a little narrower than both of those companies do theirs. But if I add just a tiny little something something up over here, I really do believe, uh, yesterday I was working with a buddy and he has a 35, I run a 25. And I really think that you're going to be able to like slam dunk a 35 foot tape in there and still not have the length that the other companies seem to think like you have to go with, you know. I'm a shorter guy and I run Diamondbacks so my one side is fairly long and it's also fairly wide so these guys are this is the wrangle pouch um, it's 10 inches wide right so when I'm kneeling down and when I'm like working down low I, I at times have a lot of like drag uh, it contacts the floor when I'm like kneeling down crouch down um, I am at 9 inches wide okay overall width and like I just said, 13 high. So I think that works out most of my personal issues um, with length, you know what I mean? If you're taller, maybe it doesn't matter for you, but for me, that's something that I wanna work out. Two, I think that the placement of the speed square is something that is lacking with that company. I don't enjoy having to have my speed square super tight to my body. It really robs me of the ability to have my bigger, chunkier tools tighter to my body and not having like a lot of flopping around, things like that. It's one thing that I really dig about having the tape. It's probably your, one of your more chunkier items. So having that tight to my body, I do enjoy that. Um, but one thing that I gotta say, I, I have to try to copy is uh, Occidental's outside. Uh, speed square pocket while well, they're slot so really like the placement but I don't like the fact that it's just like an open air slot just goes in between two pouches um, what I'm planning on doing is having this be an actual pocket so the actual pocket is 7 deep you figure seven and a quarter you're gonna be sitting just a little proud here but you're still gonna be sitting below the main pocket and it's not going to be like climbing around with other tools. You're going to be able to kind of hide it. All right. So that's going to be like a hard line what I'm doing. All right. Um, really, 
what I am trying to crowdsource here is what do you think about the main pocket configuration? Now, obviously, I'm a little bit more open. I'm trying to make sure that I'm more open at the bottom um, to prevent a level of sag. I am planning on sewing this line, which is making this not necessarily a floppy pocket, but more so like an extension of this main pouch. So it's going to be kind of like your hard sewn in all the way down to here and then leaving these able to kind of flop around. And when you're bending over you or me, whatever, whenever the user is bending over or leaning, this is still going to be able to like prevent a level of like spillage from the fastener pockets. All right. So this is kind of, you know, this is what I'm running with right now. I'm going to be trying to figure out a little bit of a better option than so this stapled in a little cleaner. But you see how I am like zippering it on like a rounded shape. I think I'm going to go with a more boxy shape simply because when this is sewn in, it's going to be kind of coming off the side a little bit. I want to be able to have a few spots with my configuration where you're going to be able to get all the way through. Maybe it's your combination square, or maybe it's like the flathead screwdriver of destruction or something like that. There's going to be times where I'm going to want to lay it out more so on the back. This is my left side. Um, more so on the back where you'll be able to have like the drywall saw, this and that. Um, still going to be running with some flappy bits. Uh, I'll probably have one coming off of here too. But like I said, if I sew this in a little differently, you'll be able to run whatever long sharp thing or whatever just long item through and not make contact with that. So I still need to make up like one more paper model before I really start cutting fabric. Um, and then I'll be able to just know like, all right, these are the sizes that I'm running with and then I'm not just cutting however many dollars a yard for no reason, all right? So I do have a couple other layouts. I don't have anything made up yet. But basically my thought process with all of it is, if I can make this setup, then I just kind of work my way down from there. Um, if I don't want to have like the framer set up, then I can have one pocket sewn into that. Um, and then it creates more of like this kind of deal this kind of a deal for me where there's not like that other framers pouch, you know what I mean? A little bit more tighter to the body. I can see a lot of people wanting that over this. I prefer having more of a framer set up because I like being able to really spread things out. You know what I mean? Some people might want things tighter right on. Um, but I figure if I make this set up, like I said, I work my way down from there and then I can work my way down to a finisher set up, down to this and that. Um, so the boxier shape, definitely saying this line, I really like this line when I sew in my hammer sleeves and my bar sleeves, I'll be able to avoid, um, what I've noticed with the badger setups is that they have this come down all the way and then swoop out. You get almost like a 90 degree thing going on here, um, with their hammer sleeves you make contact with this. Doesn't mean it's a like horrible thing. I just, if I'm gonna be looking at it, I would rather see the hammer sleeve be able to avoid that. Um, with this angle too, I'll be able to sew it in to where anytime I'm bending over um, with that coming off like that, I'll be able to sew it in on the bottom back as well. And when I'm bending over, when I'm bending over, I'll, ne I'll, I'll never be over 90 degrees with the hammer and then the wood handled hammer shouldn't ever fall out. So really, the next step for me is cut fabric, make what I need to make. Um, I will be, like I said, very open to ideas 
with insights. Like maybe you're an electrician and you're like, yo, I need this and that. I really want some perspectives maybe from a roofer that runs one pouch. Maybe I'm not thinking about that one item that you need more so on the way of like siding. Where do you guys want to put like those duck bill um, little clampy dudes? I don't know exactly what to call it. I'm not a siding guy. But you know, there's little things that guys will have on them to like bend metal. Where do you want to see that? You know what I mean? Where would it make the most sense for you? How big does it need to be? You know what I mean? Um, hopefully I get some guys and gals that are willing to put in some input. Um, I think that, like I said, I think I've cracked the code as far as the perfect length versus width to be able to get a full size speed square. I'm hard line on that. Um, I will in the future come up with designs that don't include this. You know what I mean? Um, I will come up with designs that want, at one point only use this in here. But for now, for me, I'm going to be able to get you know, excuse me, this is paper. I'm trying not to rip anything. Um, I will be able to get that in there. Plus, um, typically I'll run my razor knife on the outside. You know what I mean? Um, so for me, I'm building this. I'm going to try to prove theory. I'm going to have to wear it for a month, things like that. Don't expect any um, updates super soon. This is going to take some time. I'm still going to tweak the design, like I said, and I'm still going to be trying to play around with like one pocket ideas things like that. Um, but that's where hopefully you come in. I want to know what you need to have on you, where you want to have it. You know what I mean? Um, how do people feel about this being sewn in? And like I said, this won't be like necessarily like floppy. Um, right back to my setup again. There are days where let's say there is my little line snapper guy, my chalk box. This gets a little floppy. You know what I mean? Then this is flopping off of there, and I just don't really enjoy the noise. You know what I mean? It's like so hard line in on that for my prototype. I want to see how that reacts to me moving around. I want to see how that works out. Um, also, how do you feel about the bit index? I'm planning on having this not on my uh, strong side. I'm planning on having that on my fastener side because you figure you're running your screw guns. You're going to change your bit to run Phillips, you know, truck the back, you're going to change your bit to run T25s, whatever it is. So me, primarily, I'm on my right side with that. Um, should I plan on having these on the strong side as well? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Maybe you would like to see just a little bit more of an open pocket here. You know what I mean? You chuck whatever bigger, chunkier tool. Maybe it's those duck bills I was talking about. I don't know. Um, I guess that's going to be it for now. Um, seriously, please let me know, if you're willing, what you would need to say. Um, with hammer, let's just pretend that this is the right side bag. With the hammer, I like I said, I want to have an open sleeve, and then I'll just chuck a loop on there. More or less above halfway. Wouldn't want your hammer hanging down like way low but there's still gonna be a sleeve. You know what I mean? Um, and then left side, for me, there's gonna be bar sleeves, but I'm gonna stack them rather than, rather than putting them side by side the way these guys do. I'm gonna do more of the badger way of doing things where it's like the wider bar plus the cat's paw. You know what I mean? But I'm still gonna have plenty going on back here for whatever it is that I might need. Like I said, uh, I think I mentioned the flathead of destruction. Sometimes that's on the back. Sometimes it is a saw. So for me, I'm gonna make sure I can get them in there. And it, I'm really interested in the electricians. I feel like this is more of like a frame attrition kind of thing. If I had a loop here and a loop here, this might be a pretty good all arounder Electrician setup, realistically, especially if guys run one bag, you know, Romex connectors, nuts, bigger, chunkier, whatever, you know what I mean? That you need to throw in a box or something. Maybe it's blue wire nuts. I don't know. Um, let me know what you think, man. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're interested. I'll be next step cutting fabric, working this out. 
you'll see me at some point running this in my videos. Obviously it won't be paper, um, but I'm gonna have to wear it for a month and really figure it out. Um, really interested to see what my tape measure pouch looks like when it's actually being ran. I think I have cracked the code. Like I said, 35. I'm not gonna settle for just a 25. I'm gonna be working it to where I have to fit a 35. Thanks for watching once again.